Hello and welcome to The Pitch. I'm Sarah Allen. Chances are you hold at least one of the Australian banks in your portfolio. Perhaps you've held it for years, perhaps for decades. But is now the time you should be thinking about switching out your stocks for bank debt instead? We're going to discuss just that today with Mark Jockham from Global X ETFs. Mark, welcome. Thanks for having me, Sarah. It's great to be here. So to begin with, what's your assessment of the market today? And in light of that, how do you see Australian banks are positioned? Yeah, I mean, we've just come out of August reporting season where um, a lot of the companies were in line with expectations. Um, there were probably a few more misses than there were beats overall, uh, but you still had some of the banks reporting some really solid earnings. Um, from the Australian banking side of things, they are growing their loan books, albeit not as much as they were historically, um, but it is still growing. They're growing their deposit book as well. Um, but you've got, you know, the bellwether, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, um, most valuable company in Australia, $10 billion profit, record dividends. So even during uh, a period of you know, high interest rates and consumer potentially weakening, the banks are still you know, producing relatively good earnings overall. That being said, you know, they are now trading towards their upper end in terms of valuations. And it'll be interesting to see what happens if we do get a little bit of a harder landing, if um, there is a little bit more of a default cycle, if um, consumption isn't as strong, what happens with inflation getting back to the 2 to 3% RBA target, That'll be really interesting. Um, so we do need to monitor what's happening with the banks overall. Um, but going forward, I mean, there's still promise within the banks. Most of the returns have been driven by dividends rather than the capital side. Um, but overall, uh, the environment still seems to be quite favourable for the Australian banks overall. Now, the big four banks have been a staple of Australian investors for many, many years now. How do you convince investors to think about a bank credit ETF after years of strong performance? It's a really good question because a lot of Australians love the big banks. They expose to them, whether it's in their underlying shares, their superannuation portfolio, even just their general mortgage or their bank deposits. Um, I think what's really interesting, though, is that most Australians only had access to the banks via um, one of the um, via equity. Um, the only way you, that traditionally most people would invest in Australian banks. But there's the whole other side of the balance sheet around the, the, their debt and the amount of uh, bonds that are available within the banks that they can get access to. And when you're trying to convince an Australian investor to choose one or the other, I think both have a role in the portfolio. But you, when you look at the, um, the equity risk premium or how much more attractive are shares than bonds at the moment, mm -hmm. it's actually at one of its lowest levels in probably the last 10 to 15 years. So to me, that then says to investors, well, if, if particularly income focused investors, if I want to um, try and achieve a sustainable level of income, why am I accepting a skinnier yield profile for a high level of risk? And that's where I think um, banking credit could be a really interesting proposition for investors, not from a diversification uh, standpoint, but just from a yield perspective, mm -hmm. because you can invest in CBA shares, but their yield is now below what you could get in a bank senior bond from CBA. So investors really have to think about, well, if I'm targeting income um, and I'm also targeting, you know, to kind of stay ahead of inflation, what is a good area to be in? Like I said, over 50% of the returns have been driven by dividends um, overall in the Australian market. That's where a lot of banks have generated most of the returns. So good income source, banking credit is definitely a potential avenue there. Global X is releasing the bank ETF. Is this designed to be complementary or replacement for the Australian bank exposure in an income investor's portfolio? Definitely complementary. Um, I think that both are separate assets in terms of their actual characteristics. One is a growth asset, um, being that the equity sleeve, but then you've got the defensive sleeve. And for a lot of people who were interested in the defensive sleeve, generally most people were either in term deposits, they would just invest in general cash or government bonds. And banking credit as a whole only makes up for around about 15 to 20% of the overall bond market in Australia. So Aussies didn't really have access to um, a particular diversified area. Um, they could access the individual parts of banking credit, whether it be you know, senior fixed rate bonds, whether it be subordinated debt, whether it be hybrid securities. But now um, the, the, the Global X Australia Banking Credit ETF Bank um, encompasses all three um, different securities all into one easy, low cost diversified package. Um, so overall, we think it's a really uh, good value proposition for clients, particularly in this environment. Interest rates um, are seeming to stay a little bit higher here in Australia. Um, government bonds have already priced in a potential cut coming. Um, so from a yield perspective and to also get diversification to, you know, trusted sources of income, because that's what we were hearing from clients. They want good source of income from reputable organisations. And what's more reputable than these really strong, from a like capital perspective, um, Australian banks. Market leading in, in the world, when you're looking at their capital ratios, their level of risk, they really are the envy of the industry.
What are some of the other benefits that this product can offer, given that owning it obviously will be at an opportunity cost to owning completely different exposures? Definitely. I think um, one of the best um, value propositions of a product like this is the diversi diversification aspect. Mm -hmm. So you're getting two layers of diversification with a product like this. The first is around um, just your both growth and defensive uh, split. So correlations have been relatively positive over the last couple of years between um, bonds and shares. We have seen a little bit of a fall in correlations overall back to, I guess, what people would, would deem as, I guess, a bit more normal. Um, but overall, you can get the second layer of diversification, which is within fixed income as well. So it's great to have your fixed income and growth assets having that diversification mix. But then within fixed income, you've got exposure to three different securities that all kind of dance to their own tune. So you're getting two layers, layers of diversification within one product, which I think is great because diversification is one of the only free lunches in investing. Um, and then secondly is around the yield profile. If you look at historically and at the moment, yields are they've relatively compressed over the last um, couple of years. Particularly, um, you've seen bond yields rise, but now as they're pricing in interest rate cuts, they've declined. Uh, the Australian share market yield has declined. Banking share yields have declined. But an area that's staying quite sticky is this area of banking credit. So I think that for Australians who used to get exposure to high dividend yielding shares, they can now explore this idea of fixed income in a diversified way while still maintaining a, a decent level of income overall. Well, thank you so much for taking us through that today. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate it. If you've enjoyed this interview, please subscribe to Livewire Markets. Thank you for watching.